empower, bring about community change and impact based on what we can do with black disability studies. Uh, continue to call this conversation, and this is going to be a conversation, not a paper presentation. I sat through several sessions today, uh, and I just hope that your expectations uh, are that of participation and not one of, you're going to hear area day discussion about theory and, uh, and, and those sort of things. Um, but what is important to us right now, uh, if you think about a three-gear kind of machine, a machine that first has community activists, faculty members, and students actively engaged and involved in research, actively engaged in service projects, actively engaged in evaluation, actively engaged in production of new research, uh, and developing new models, moving on a basic basis, trying to impact institutions, communities, families, and how they work, with the outcomes being a more sustainable, accessible community, one that is more democratic, one is, that's bias-free, uh, and one that's sustainable in a, in a certain sense. So, so this is the, the work, if you will, uh, that we think um, black disability studies can contribute to. Um, it's modeled after behavior um, that emerged in the 60s where uh, some of us, uh, I, I was a student in, went to Rutgers University in 1965, um, a little bit unhappy with uh, the makeup of the institution and what it did, uh, so we decided to close school down. And one of the things that uh, happened as part of that protest effort, uh, an outgrowth, was the development of uh, the nation notion of Africana Studies. If you look at the history of Africana Studies at Rutgers University, uh, there's a on the on the the old web page. There's an article, and it lists a number of folks who were students. Uh, at that time. And it's out of that experience um, that I brought uh, when Jane uh, suggested, and I was at the time serving as the chair of the National, National Black uh, Council of Dis Coalition on Disability, and, and it was scary. I was at the end of a two-year term, and I was not quite certain that we had done a whole bunch. Uh, so when Jane said, well, what about this Black Disability Studies initiative, a development of a curriculum, would that make sense? I said, hmm, every, every administration wants a legacy. So I said, yes, let's make that a legacy. But I came to that work on the premise of a couple of things. One, or a history of a couple of things. One, my involvement as a student uh, in creating Africana Studies at Rutgers University. Involvement in um, teaching uh, and helping develop a course uh, in uh, the black experience. Uh, at, at Rutgers, and at the time, at Livingston College, Tony K. Bambara, Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni, and Nathan Hurd happened to be on the faculty, uh, and so uh, for all the literature folks in the room, there were also sociology and, and political science folks and economics folks and biologists on the team, but those are the names that we remember, which is really interesting as we think about the conversations that are going on. So that worked. Uh, then I've continued over the past 30 years, almost 40, uh, to teach an adjunct capacity at public institutions at, in New Jersey um, and at Rutgers Theological Seminary and courses in um, black politics and American experience, race, poverty, and welfare. So when Jane, when in June uh, of 2013, uh, we convened a conversation, I was bringing that headset and those experiences to the conversation. Uh, it struck me that the same concerns uh, that were at the base of our motivation in the 60s about creation of African studies are similarly exist now in, as we begin to think about black disability studies and, and other, other studies uh, fields. So some of the things that, and, and I'm drawing on the work of reading, rereading the other uh, evening, uh, Ron Karenga's Introduction to African American Studies. Uh, and he said, you know, there were academic concerns and social concerns that drove that movement. 
And some of the concerns on the academic side was that there was omissions and distortions in traditional disciplines, aka white studies, uh, that were present in the academy. And then there was a, a tendency of those studies to reinforce the existing order. So since we want to change, all right, our academic thinking had to be different. Uh, and so that was the academic challenge. But because the concerns were both academic and social, remember our wheel, trying to impact community. We were concerned about the low, enro low enrollment of students, all right? Now we can talk about low income students, we can talk about students with disabilities, just low enrollments, and that pattern exists today. The services and the treatment that those students experience, and the experience that those students have on campus. Kind of a pattern of assimilation uh, and socialization into mainstream culture with a denial, all right, uh, of our own identity. Um, and a, a sense also, though, that that assimilation led to existence at the same time with segregation, right, isolation and segregation, and also uh, that led to an acceptance of the status quo. In other words, an absence of, of activism. We think.